Who wins in a fight? Humans or robots? I mean, robots are a force to be reckoned with. They're practically indestructible, super strong, and can calculate anything in a matter of microseconds. Which, gotta admit, puts our puny human abilities on the ropes. But we humans have advantages too. We're far more flexible, we can adapt to our surroundings, and our bodies naturally heal themselves over time. When you think about it, we're pretty darn impressive too. So can you imagine what would happen if you combined the strength of human and machine? The future can't come soon enough. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's the ultimate hybrid of interesting video game knowledge and cringy dad jokes. Today's episode is sponsored by Warframe, a free-to-play third-person action game set in the Origin system, a solar system that's been torn apart by war, where factions fight for resources and dominance over what remains of society. There's drama, there's betrayal, and with the latest story-driven update, The New War, the stakes have never been higher as we fight against the synthetic AI faction, the galaxy's biggest and oldest threat, the sentience. Now, in the game, we control the titular Warframes, beings that were created to fight off these invaders centuries prior. At first glance, these things appear to be armored robot space ninjas, which gotta admit, pretty cool potluck of adjectives. But in reality, these things are even better because they're not just machines, they're actually a fusion of man and machine. They're humans that have been mutated by a weaponized parasite known as the Infestation, giving them steel-like armored skin, hardened organs, and the ability to perform incredible feats like super fast running, massive jumps, jumps and shooting lightning out of your hands. I mean, who wouldn't want abilities like that? And then, you can make it all even better as you upgrade RPG style throughout the game. You can even create companion pets to assist you in battle, which are also modifiable. Who is a good boy? Who is a good boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, my little killer alien missile launching doggo. But perhaps the coolest thing of all is that all of this sci-fi world building isn't just some far-off fantasy. The fusion of organic and inorganic material is a relatively new realm of science in real life, but despite it still being in its early days, it's already yielded some mind-blowing results. Results that look a heck of a lot like the capabilities of Warframes. Seriously, it's like scientists saw games like this and said, hey, can we get a grant to make this real? And the donors were like, please take all of my money. And now here we are at the beginning of an era of biomachinery. So when can you expect your own metallic super skin empowering you to take down a race of invading synthetic aliens? That, my friends, is the question we're answering today. First off, what do I mean by biomechanical hybrids? Well, as the name suggests, it's a hybrid of biological matter and mechanical parts. Now, that might make you immediately think of something like a cyborg, and you're not too far off with that. Cyborgs, by definition, are cybernetic organisms with both mechanical and organic body parts, but they aren't quite the same as biomechanical hybrids. Where a cyborg may have a robot arm that is itself completely mechanical, a biomechanical hybrid is built using organic material within the mechanical element. Think about it this way, robotics and biology share a lot of things in common. For instance, when you want to get up from the couch and grab yourself your sixth Diet Coke of the afternoon, your brain sends information using electrical signals through nerves in your spine, which stimulates motor neurons in the muscles, causing them to move. Similarly, a robot trying to move will have a main processing chip send electrical data signals through wires to have an action be taken, like getting up and getting me another Diet Coke. Come on, theory bot, hurry up! By combining these ideas, you end up with biohybrid actuators, and there are a few examples of it working in real life. The first is from back in 2012. A team from Harvard University and Caltech created a silicone jellyfish that was coated in the heart muscle cells from rats. By using electrodes, they were able to stimulate the heart muscles, which caused them to pulse and propel the jellyfish forward. More recently, Harvard created a swimming robot that looks a lot like a rayfish. It has a golden skeleton and a rubber body, but it's once again filled with those rat heart muscle cells. 200,000 of them. Who says machines are heartless? Quite the contrary, they have thousands. They even genetically engineered the muscles to react to light rather than electrodes, and so the robotic rayfish can now swim using the power of organic cells. All of it is a fusion of organic cells with the wires and motors of robots. Now look at our Warframes in the game. We know that they're mutated humans with three additional parts, the neuroptics, the chassis, and the system. A closer inspection of the system makes it look like some kind of mechanical structure within the body, a metallic skeleton of sorts. Some that feels oddly similar to the golden skeleton from that rayfish robot. Why the need for an organic component? Well, strong and flexible muscles are vital for the Warframe's battle capabilities. Organic muscles allow for much greater flexibility when you're running about a battlefield, dodging enemy fire or trying to stealthily infiltrate your enemy's base. All of those things require flexibility and finesse, something that is very difficult for robots to do without those organic muscles. Don't believe me? Well, here's a clip from Boston Dynamics. 
It's definitely cool. Robots doing parkour, who would have thought? But did you notice the key detail? They're slow and, in all honesty, a bit stiff. It's an amazing feat of engineering, don't get me wrong. But if you tried to put the Atlas in a fight, it's not going to be able to dodge or sneak anywhere, let alone doing so in a timely fashion. Muscles offer that physical flexibility that pure machines just don't have. Take a look at this biohybrid finger that was made by researchers at the University of Tokyo Institute of Industrial Science. Sure, it's a bit rudimentary, but it represents the principle of fine motor skills that muscles can offer to machine elements, something that pure robotics still struggle to master. The Warframe in the game then represents the future of this sort of balance. As you'd expect, completing missions in the game levels up your Warframe, making it stronger and faster. Wouldn't really be too much of a game without a feature like that. But what would seem like just a gameplay mechanic actually makes real-world sense in the context of biohybrids. Organic muscle can grow. When you go to the gym to get them sick gains, you are building muscle. This is a process known as muscle hypertrophy, which is essentially the fusing of damaged muscle fibers. When you work out, you're actually damaging the muscles, but your body repairs the damage and in turn creates larger, stronger muscle. This is great for the field of biohybrid robots because it means that your machines can literally get stronger over time. Speaking of repairs, mechanical engineer Ritu Raman gave an interview with Science Focus about her work with biohybrid robots. And in it, she explains that the benefit of using organic muscle is its healing properties. Our bodies are constantly repairing damage. A damaged cell will multiply in order to replace itself. If you break a bone, your body will immediately produce new cells that heal that damage. And while Raman's work is, for the most part, theoretical, my favorite type of work, we have started to see this with fairly recent biohybrid experiments. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Xenobots. They are bizarre. You see, the Xenobots are basically computer-designed clusters of biological tissue that are all mixed together, mostly cells that have been scraped off of frog embryos. But what's crazy about these newly formed cell clusters is that they're able to move towards a target, pick things up, and most importantly, heal themselves when they're cut or damaged. They are technically robots. They have been designed by AI to perform a purpose, but they have been built purely from organic material. It's just mind-bendy. As you can probably imagine, it's still very early technology and isn't fully programmable yet. But in theory, it is a first step towards these biohybrid soldiers. We know from the game that the Warframe's organs are, quote, interlinked with untold resilience, implying that they all function together as a solid unit. The exact coordination we see coming out of these Xenobots. And the healing ability of the Xenobots could be a first step towards developing some sort of rejuvenation aura that, again, we're seeing present with the Warframes in the game. And what about sight? Feels obvious for us as humans, but if you take a look at these Warframes, do you see any eye holes or visors? No. No, you do not. So, how on earth do you kick alien butt when you're running around the battlefield completely blind? That's where the neuroptics come in. Neurons and optics. It's the way that the Warframe sees the world around it. To solve for this in real life, we turn to a different part of biohybrid research, this time in the field of cyborg botany. That's right, plant robots. Everyone thinks about cyborgs as being humanoid or animal things, but plant cyborgs are a real thing that are being worked on right now. These guys were created at MIT and use a water-soluble polymer to essentially create an electrically conductive channel inside of the plant's body, allowing them to connect wires to it and receive electrical signals. What does any of this have to do with sight? Well, by doing this, they've managed to turn the plant into an antenna. Plants have the ability to sense electromagnetic waves, so by creating an organic wire inside of the plant, they can now measure those changes and allow it to affect other processes, like, say, creating a natural motion sensor. This also proves that the Warframes wouldn't necessarily need eyes to see. This type of biohybrid tech could allow Warframes to sense motion through differences in EM waves around them, similar to how sonar works. Finally, let's tackle one of the toughest things to explain with science, the Warframe's shield abilities. And no, I'm not just talking about their armor. Warframes have a built-in shield ability, an invisible barrier that lessens the damage that they take from enemies. Typically, this means bullets, but their shields also allow them to lessen the elemental or type damage done by certain weapons. Surely this sort of thing can't be explained using biohybrid robots, right? No, no, it, it, it can't. They've only just managed to make a finger move with muscle. You think they're really developing invisible shield technology for them too? But where the jellyfish used rat muscles to operate, scientists are using other types of animal parts to improve these biohybrid robots. For example, there's a robot at Tel Aviv University that has an ear of a locust attached to it in order to help it respond to noises. So although it hasn't been done yet, is there something from the biological world that could potentially give our warframes a natural shielding ability? The answer to that, my friends, is a resounding yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present 
present to you the water bear. Officially, its name is tardigrade, but come on, who ain't calling this thing the water bear? Now, these creatures are small, less than one millimeter in length, but they are amazing. They can survive in extreme temperatures, extreme pressures, even in the vacuum of space. These things are nature's greatest survivors, but despite their huge resume of abilities, there's one that I want to call out for our purposes today, and that's how they protect themselves from UV light. It's been documented that the water bear can absorb what should otherwise be a lethal dose of UV light, and you know, just roll with that. Sounds pretty nice to me. I end up going through one bottle of sunscreen when I go outside to pick up the mail. But how it copes with this UV light is especially interesting. Its cells have evolved in such a way that it means that they produce a protein that absorbs UV radiation and then releases it from the body, which causes the water bear to glow blue. And what color do our Warframes glow when they're using their shields? Well, sometimes green and sometimes gold, but there are definitely blue ones. But the principle still stands. There is a biological way to create a natural shield from things like radiation, which is also one of the type modifications that weapons in Warframe can have. So given enough time and scientific advancement, it could be plausible to modify these cells to form glowing blue shields against all sorts of elemental damage and apply that biological matter into the designs of biohybrid robots. So things are looking good, right? Development of biohybrid robots only really began in the early 2000s, less than 20 years ago, and already we're making huge strides in learning how to fuse the organic with the inorganic. We'll be running around with sword steel skin in no time, right? Yeah, there's still one problem with all this. For as cool as Warframes are, there's one teeny tiny little issue with them. That parasite that's used to convert humans, the infestation, yeah, it kind of drives you insane. You see, in the lore of the game, it wasn't possible to test the long-term effects that Warframe conversion would have on humans. They were in the middle of a war, after all, and kind of desperate. At first, everything went off without a hitch. Just convert the bodies and minds of your best soldiers into Warframes, and you have yourself a super strong tactical killing machine. But then stuff started to go wrong. The soldiers began to lose their sanity, and that's one side effect that's gonna raise a few red flags. Except, that's not where the story ends. There's a big twist in Warframe story that explains how we, the player, are able to control these insane Warframes. And the answer is children. Human children. In game, they're called the Tenno. Special kids that got exposed to something called the Void, which gave them space powers, allowing them to control the Warframes remotely using a technique called transference. But that's not what's important here. The important fact is that they're children, which scientifically explains how they can become amazing operators for these machines. You see, a child's brain isn't fully developed yet. No offense to any children watching. It's just science, and it's actually a great thing. This quote-unquote underdeveloped brain is actually the key to a lot of their success. It is like a child's superpower. By the age of two or three, a child's brain will go through a period called exuberant synaptogenesis. In this period, they'll have twice as many synaptic connections between neurons in the brain than an adult. This is why kids are able to pick up new languages so easily. There are multiple neural pathways, so their brain isn't locked into a particular speaking pattern or dialect or way of thinking yet. However, as we get older, our brains begin to prune back the number of neural pathways, only keeping the ones that we use regularly. Gotta admit, at this point, I've only really got neural pathways for connecting FNAF lore. This was tested by the University of California, where 106 children between the ages of 4 and 5 were put up against 170 college students, given a gadget that they've never seen before, and then tasked with figuring it out. The machine was actually based off of basic cause and effect. The device had them place clay shapes in boxes in a particular order to make the box light up and play sounds. You might have an idea of what happened happened here, the four and five year olds crushed the college students. They were faster at learning this new piece of technology. Warframes are complex weapons. They're strong, durable, flexible, and most importantly, new to the human experience. As such, the people who are going to be best at learning how to use them and integrating them into their organic lives are children with their flexible, neuronally rich brains. Not only that, but you also need a brain with lightning fast reflexes to make the most of the Warframe's agility. And again, children are great for it. A study of 3,305 people between the ages of 16 and 44 showed that after the age of 24, the brain's response time begins to decline at a slow but steady rate. This has also been corroborated by Dr. Todd Sontag, a doctor who specializes in esports injuries. When talking about esports players, quote, their eye-hand coordination starts to deteriorate by the time that they're 25 years old. The 18-year-olds have already been playing for 10 years, and they're quicker than the older players. It's hard to continue to compete past their mid-20s. This is why the average retirement age for esports players is 25.
2025. They just can't keep up with the reaction times of the younger people, whose minds can still learn new things much quicker and react much faster than the older human counterparts. So, there you have it, friends. Not only are Warframes totally plausible from a scientific standpoint, but their strategy of using children was also totally on the money. Though I'd be lying if I didn't say I was slightly sad about all this. By the time science has developed these biohybrids to the point of human-sized killing machines, I'm gonna be past my peak reflexes. Heck, I'm already in my 30s and I'm already past them, so boy, do I feel it right now. I can barely keep up with my toddler running loose around the house, but it's fine. Grandpa Pat will just be sitting over here on the porch watching the next generation of biohybrid robots destroying everything from a distance. Just make sure you stay off my lawn. But hey, just gotta say thank you one final time to today's sponsor, Warframe. This game has been around for a while, so I kind of felt like I'd missed the boat on joining the fun, but thanks to the years of updates and expansions, there's actually no better time to join. The new war update that I briefly mentioned today just launched with a massive new quest that'll provide hours of action, and the thing we here on the channel love more than anything else, sweet, sweet, juicy lore. If you have never played Warframe before, I highly recommend that you jump in and take a look for yourself. Again, as a reminder, it is free to play. After hopping into the game to do research for this episode, let me just say that I got a little bit obsessed with designing my clan dojo. Gotta make sure people know that they're walking into theorist territory. So if what I've said today has piqued your interest in the game, I encourage you to go and download it by using the link down in the description. It's available on the Switch, it's available on the PlayStation, it's available on Xbox and PC, and again, it is totally free. Uh, it is amazing to me that today we live in a world where you can get a game with AAA quality for zero dollars. It's unreal. Plus, if you're new to the game, after you sign up, go to Warframe.com or use the in-game console after you complete the tutorial and enter the promo code TNW TGT for The Game Theorists, TGT, and you'll be able to redeem an epic pack of in-game items, including some great starter weapons, in-game currency, and loads more, but you gotta be quick. That code is gonna expire on January 31st of 2022, so I'm gonna wrap things up here quickly. You hop into the game, complete that tutorial, insert the code, and start saving the galaxy. I'm actually really curious as to where this new war storyline is gonna play out, so who knows? You might see us sometime in 2022 with a lore episode on the game, so I'll see you online. Watch out for the Theorist Dojo, and as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory! Thanks for watching.